So good morning folks, how are you doing? It's Des Catties. I've come out for a little while up into my little wooded area. Um, today, or in this video, I'm going to be um, having a brew as usual, having my breakfast. And also, what I want to do is I want to, I've got two ponchos by Helicontex. And I've had a few inquiries about people asking about what they'd look like press studied together and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play around with the two ponchos together and just relying on the uh, quick deployment ridge line that I use. All right, so stay tuned for another really exciting video. Right, if like me, when you're going to the undergrowth of the woods, and you know what, it gets on your fecking nerves when you get spider webs going across your face and everything else and you're constantly brushing them off, rather than wearing a wide brimmed hat with loads of corks hanging off it, akin to something you do in Australia, what you can do is take a stick literally just take a stick and beat the fuck no, what we, and literally what you do is just hold a stick in front of you yeah hold that stick look there's nothing no weight to it that you just hold it in front of you and the trailing spider webs get caught on the stick how cool is that as simple as that and then all you've got to do is treat you like a bit of a Every now and again, give it a twist if the spider webs are still on there, and uh, you can almost eat it later like a bit of candy floss. All right, so there's a little tip for you, folks. See, I'm full of full of it, and I'm full of full of crap, really. <laughs> Common maple. There's a lot of it in this woodland. I've seen tons of it. Not surely, not sure why, but there is. Um, uh, I've been using quite a lot of it for my um, little crafting projects, making those little hooks uh, from towels from the shed, and such like. So, uh, yeah, just going to take a bimble up to that little spot. I seem to be using the same spot simply because it's just out of the way simple i haven't got to muck around and um gives me two sensible trees to use as a ridge light uh, for me uh rapid deployment ridge line as it were and uh we can go to that spot and obviously i can do some different configurations with those two ponchos together so uh it was quite nice actually back there i see a fox sort of just curled up in the lee of the at the base of this tree just sitting there chilled out in the sun Unfortunately, by the time I see it and it started to walk off, I could only see its arse end and I didn't have time to put the camera on, but at least I, ex I see it for myself. So I'm here, so I'll uh, come back to the little one, folks.
it's missing completely. Oh, <laughs> what's the odds on that? They totally missed where I wanted it to go. Basically, it all the same. It's not saying I do normally is use my knife. find that out yeah. I've brought that out. I'll beat these further curls can you? Works so well. Let's move that flame away from the camera. And obviously I'm only out for not long really, so I'm just using a tin. I used to have herbal teas in there, but now I've got some coffees and bits and pieces. Literally it's just for coming out, just for a short period of time. Does anyone else out there boil their water in there? Not so much a kettle, but in a cup, something like this, and then put their coffee, tea, whatever it is they're going to drink, and then drink straight out of that, as opposed to boiling their water in a separate vessel and then transferring it over to their cup of choice. I mean, obviously you'd have to do it in a kettle, because I'd imagine that would be a bit dangerous, wouldn't it? Pouring, boiling hot water into your mouth. That'd have to be a bit of a silly one, wouldn't it? But anyway, yeah, you know, regardless of that, because I've seen people do that. I've seen some YouTube videos where people literally just boil their water up and then had their, you know, whatever, just, you know, just, just you know, starting a conversation with you, with you really. So only a better day today, weather-wise. It's been cold. I mean, not like freezing the balls off a brass monkey but I mean it has been a bit chillier compared to say over the Easter weekend it was gorgeous the Easter weekend and then come Monday um, it got a bit breezy and it was uh, ooh, a bit cold on the old man boobs I can tell you that for nothing but uh, a bit more glorious today nice blue skies again slight breeze in the air and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have my brew and then uh, we'll crack on. Uh, I need to have my breakfast and then crack on and do this, uh, these punch outs. Another quick lesson for you. In there is some stinging nettles, kind of like a nature's hand, uh, hand cloth, dish cloth. Pick a few out, pull a few off the stem, put them in a bit of warm water, and you can use that to get all your debris off your. Off the, in my case, it's the porridge that I've eaten. So uh, clean the cup out.
and also the warm water kills the uh, the trichomes, the hairs, the stinging hairs that are on the stinging nettle so your don't, fingers don't get stung as much. Right, so you've seen me come out with one poncho and um, if some of you are aware or, or not aware I've actually got two Helicon Tarp, uh, Helicon Tex um, ponchos um, Shout out to my mate 
uh, feeding bushcraft across the pond. All right, mate. And he asked the question, he wanted to know as well what the configuration would be like with two of them. Okay, so not used two of them together. So what I'm going to do is set up me uh, set up me quick deployment ridge line, and then uh, we'll have a play. So there won't be a lot of talking now, folks. It will just be me setting up the t setting up both the ponchos in different ways. All right, see what we can come up with. All right, so stay tuned for that bit. I said I weren't going to talk much, but we might as well. I mean, that's it at the moment, obviously. Pretty obvious there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of um, use a couple of lines from the, uh, from the other bits that I've got here. And then what we'll do is we'll pull up the hoods, and obviously we'll see how much more space that's going to do.
now obviously that's giving you a shitload of space the only obviously my my concern would be um, it, what it'd be like in a downpour because I can imagine that you know that some water's going to come in there but as long as it's only down the middle I suppose um, you'll probably get away with it it's quite a nice setup really a lot very spacious and as I say for me personally carrying two of these two of these is a lot smaller than a tarp but I'm not writing off tarps you know what I mean I'm just it's just me personally so there's a sort of a one simple setup I mean I dare say there'd be tons more you know we could do uh I'll tell you what, let's do a um, plough point and see how that comes out. So I'm just having a look at it to set it up as a plough point. And if I'm brutally honest, I'm not sure I like the idea of it with the facts with it, with the, um, with it press studded in the middle. I'm really not sure about it. I think that, you know, at the moment it's a glorious sunny day. There's hardly any wind about. But what I'd be more impressed with if it was hammering it down with rain to see what the water would be like on it. Because obviously there is a gap there. You know, because you've pressed that it together and with all the well in the world, you're still going to get some sort of water coming through there. So I'm a little bit sort of apprehensive in that sense. But the first setup I've done, yeah, fair enough. I think that ain't too bad. Yeah, you could have your arguments there all day long on tons of variables when you're putting shelters up and such like. But I think that's okay. Certainly gives you some sort of versatility. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do one more setup. And I'm literally just going to set it up like an apex and see how that comes like, do it on the ridge line. All right, so I'll come back to you. All right, and so there's the apex design. Simple apex, I mean, how much room there's under there at the moment. And there's not, um, you know, I haven't even pulled out the hoods on either of them. The ridge line. Obviously, there's a little bit of a bit of tension, even more taken up on the ridge line. But I'd set that up just below my waist. Um, a good thing about it as well is when you actually look at it, the way the um, the way the ponchos are gone. This one has obviously slipped over the top, which is obviously going to give it more of a more of a waterproof kind of option than probably one of the previous ones so I'm actually quite impressed with that one I'll tell you what else I think it'll be good at that make a lovely sort of baker set baker tent kind of setup if you can imagine sort of one pole up there and one pole there and um, I reckon that'll come out pretty good as well should we give it a go yeah why not that in a baker tent set up but literally what I've done is I've just attached one of the lines and run it up against that run it up over that branch now uh, obviously what I could do with the second one is obviously unpeak that and then do the same thing but I'm not okay so basically if you want to do a you know a baker tent set up you literally would have just you know you try and get them obviously off the floor and just have like your porch area at the front to favour a fire almost. Alright, so um, that'll do for now, I think, with the with the poncho setups. Um, yeah, pretty good. Right, so what I'll do as well, folks, I'll quickly take you round the poncho and I'll show you some little um, sort of like little adjustments I've made to it. Nothing major, you know. What I mean, you can do it yourself if you are, if you you know, if you do use these ponchos. But one thing that I have done. Is I've actually attached I've actually attached paracord lines to it now I can either do it one or two ways on on the Polish camo one which is obviously the darker one there um, what I've done was I've actually tied them through and done an overhand knot okay um, not an over I've done an overhand knot on some of them on this one it literally is just looped through 
so you can take them off if you so wish. Now the reason being why I've done that is if I show you the pegs that I use, it's these little alley ones. Now they're all right. The only thing is they're, they're a pain on your hand. They really are because they can get uncomfortable pushing them in the ground. You do need some sort of gentle persuader to get them in the ground, especially when it's nice and hard like it is now. But if I use that one, for example, I can't get the peg through the eyelet. Okay, so obviously to get around that is obviously attach a piece of paracord. Now if we look at the Polish one, I'll take the peg out. And then we look at that. Simply what I've done is I've actually just used a length of paracord about a foot or so long. Okay, burnt off the ends, put it through, and then I've done like a fisherman's knot so that ain't coming out. And then that stays on there, and it just gives me a little bit more versatility with a peg rather than you know having to muck around trying to get something on that eyelet. If you can look at that one, I've obviously got one on the Polish on the Polish poncho and obviously there's the green one that's attached to the American woodland, the US Army woodland one and then obviously the Prussic loop is obviously off the, off the ridge line so yeah I mean if I go close up you can see how that's as I was saying that goes right over the top there so that's not too bad it's quite a nice little set up that one Right, so there's sort of like the only adjustments that I've made to it so far is by putting these corded bits on the corners and I have put it on some of them as well, I've put it in the middle one as well. It just makes it a little bit simpler for you when you're setting up. Alright. So nothing major there folks, you know what I mean? I literally am just mucking around with a couple of ponchos, it was only because out of Eden Bushcraft was asking about it and um, I thought yeah Kushti will have to give it a go and see how it comes out um, obviously you've got to be concerned about the joint where it's press studded in the middle I mean it's pretty good on it's going to be pretty good on some kind of confi uh, uh, poncho configurations but obviously it's not going to work very well on a lot of them and I wasn't that keen on setting it up as the uh, as the plow point <laughs> loads of room under there because obviously you're doubling the amount of, of space you've got with a poncho but um, what I will say is the fact that, um, like I keep saying, is the fact that when they're packed away, they take up almost less space as a as an as a normal three by three tarp. I personally think, and they're lightweight, and you can obviously stick them somewhere on your on your kit. You've got that option of obviously wearing one as a waterproof cape, and then the second one going up a shelter, or vice versa. All right. And then I suppose the only other thing that I'll tell you about that I use is that I also bring along as well in my kit there's a few extra one of these like this sort of sort of Dyneema cord this is an actual throw line and it's nice and thin and I'll tell you what I noticed about this using it is that when it gets wet it doesn't seem to um, doesn't seem to um, absorb as much moisture as paracord okay that's one thing I noticed about this cord and that's why I tend to use it I used to have it set up on my tarps as well but um, as I say now, I use I keep sort of three or four of them coiled up and inside my little bag with my pegs and stuff like that just for setting up the tarps or the ponchos in this case. All right, and then I've got, just got a carabiner on the end now, just as a, a means of simplicity. Yeah, I could use a bit of toggle and so on and so forth, but that's what I've been using a bit of you know, carabiner on the end. And then it, they're just handy as extra lines for for uh, if you want to rig up your um, your shelter in um, whatever configuration you choose to. All right. So I hope there's some little tips there, folks, for you.
simple fare of noodles. So folks, I'm going to end it there. Um, hope you enjoyed that one. A few little muck around configurations with the uh, with the ponchos from Helicontex. Not affiliated with them. Don't get paid by them or anything like that. I'm not that uh, not that famous. <laughs> not that good. Um, so there it is. All right. So usual thing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please stay safe. All right. Always check out the description. Badges are still on sale. Um, all the information will be down below in the description. And uh, let us know what you think of the video. All right. So I'm going to tuck into my noodles and then I'll be heading home. So see you later, folks. Take care. Love you all. Stay safe. There's Katie signing out. I'll see you on the flip side.